Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always, I am Sean, this is In The Mixer as we continue our Hashtag United series in Football Manager 2019 and it's been a busy 24 hours in the Football Manager community because last night at about 2am local time, I don't know what time it was anywhere else in the world, but they announced November 19th as the Football Manager 2020 release date, which means, well one, it's a random Tuesday, which is really weird, I would have thought that like a release date for the game would come out on like a Friday night or something like that, to try and get it in before the weekend so that people can go and play it, but Tuesday, whatever, I'm sure there's reasoning behind it that I don't understand, and it means that we're probably going to get the beta version around the 5th of November, hopefully that previous weekend, because it's a long weekend in Melbourne, but because of that, it means we're going to have a couple of extra weeks of our hashtag United save, which is really great, I think it means we can get through 15 seasons, continue working through the Premier League, continue trying to give the, se the series a decent conclusion. And hopefully if we time everything correctly, finish the series around the end of October, we'll be able to go straight into the beta once it drops at that particular time. But before we get into all that, we have to finish season 14, which we're at the start of today in this episode. It's been a pretty busy off season and I'll go through the transfers in, in a moment, but it's really been a focus on trying to give ourselves more depth you know, if we sort by ability here, like we picked up a few good players that are at a good level, a lot that have really high potential, which is going to be a continued focus because it's easier for us to try and get like three and a half star, three star high potential players that we can bring in and give game time and hope they get better and improve with the side and make us better that way. And then trying to go over established stars because we're still not that highly regarded as a team when you look at like our reputation compared with the rest of the country. We're still only three star reputation globally which is really around like a low-end championship level. Um, there's championship sides that are like three and a half star, and most of the Premier League teams are at least four star. So we're, we're still quite a bit behind them in terms of our prestige within the game and the players that we're able to bring. So bringing like current national team players or current superstars of the world is still a bit tough. But if we stay in the Premier League again this season, if we have a decent run, continue to boost our profile, do well in a cup competition, there's no reason that, that can't turn into three and a half star, four star very quickly. And then we can start looking at bringing in some like actual global superstars. But for the time being, I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone. And at the same time, we are in a position that we're actually making a tremendous profit each season, mainly because of the TV rights deals. But we do still have that stadium that's 12 months away with the extra time until the release of the full version of the game and probably the better as well. We're going to be able to probably see that in this actual series, which is fantastic. And financially speaking, like we've got an overall balance of £44 million. Pound. That's despite me spending a tremendous amount this off-season in terms of transfers. So if we have another season like the last one, maintain our status in the Premier League, we're going to have a whole bunch of money in the coffers that we can then take to try and develop the squad a bit further to try and bring in some proven first-team talent and stop being such like a development club or a high prospect club or a club that churns through a lot of players because we do do that. I try and get in, you know, new high profile prospects, new wonder kids, all that sort of stuff each off season. But speaking of, let's introduce you guys to the new players that have come in. Really straightforward, 11 have gone out, 11 have come in. They're pretty much like-for-like -like replacements in most instances. Uh, so Sean Duncan, who was our last, our backup goalkeeper last season. Joel Holden, who played quite a bit at right wing back. Noah McDonald, Ewan Harrington, who's had a couple of seasons. Yanni Vlachos, Robbie Sullivan, who had a couple of seasons as well. Scott Egan, Peter Orofu, Sam Birch, Kevin Simpson, and Anthony Gillian. Mostly guys that joined us back in like League One, the championship. We've moved them on. We've moved majority of them on for profit as well, which is great. And we've managed to bring in some really high quality. I'll start at the top, Nazim Akanovic, who we actually purchased about two years ago uh, for a million pounds. And we had to wait for him to turn 18 before we could actually get him in. Fantastic box-to-box -box midfielder, can also play as a deep-lying role. A Bosnian international with 12 caps despite only being 18 years of age. Three-and-a-half star current ability, four-star potential. I had purchased him with the idea that he was going to walk straight into our starting lineup. It may not actually work that way because of some of the other players that we've been able to bring in, but an absolute beast in midfield and still very young. A tremendous amount of potential. He's going to be excellent for us throughout the course of this season. Matthew Downing, who you would have been in the last episode as well, free transfer from Tottenham. Um, they didn't renew his contract after his youth contract finished, and he'll be a good depth player for us. He'll play on the right-hand side of midfield. Already comfortable in that position, comfortable as an attacking winger. Got a lot of different stats that do need work. Only two-star current ability, but still five-star potential. Only on 5K a week, and he counts towards our English quota, which is what we kind of need to keep in mind as we're now in the Premier League and have FFP and all that sort of stuff. We have to continue to try and develop English talent as well. Uh, Sander Padanama is a PSV goalkeeper, young Dutch youth international who we've brought across for £6 million. Really thrilled to actually pick him up as cheap as we have. He'll come in pretty much to the first team straight away. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential. Gives us really good depth in goal. Rojak, who we had last season, had an excellent under 20 uh, under 21 European Championships. He was in the team of the year for that tournament. We're going to give Patanima, Patanama the number one shirt and let him develop a little bit further because he's got a bit higher potential. But only 19 years old, he's going to be excellent for us. And if he can make 
good on some of that potential. There's no reason that he can't be like a standard Premier League goalkeeper for the next 10 seasons. Next one we brought in is Aaron Langford. I've tried to bring in Aaron Langford two seasons in a row. We finally got him for £7.5 million from Crystal Palace. Prior to that, he was at Derby, uh, which I think they let his contract run. Crystal Palace signed him on a free. He spent last year at Bournemouth winning the championship with them. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential, excellent heading, marking, tackling, good technique, decent passing as well, double figures. So if we do try at some point in the season, and you know I'm going to do it at some point because can't help myself to move to ball playing defenders, he'll be excellent in that role. Next up, one, Carlos Navarro, four caps for the Colombian national side. He's a right midfielder. He doesn't currently have a work permit, but hopefully the next time that we're able to apply for one, which is in early September, we'll get it straight away because he's still in that national team structure. Picked him up for £5 million, paid his release cord from New England Revolution in the MLS. Phenomenal crossing ability, fantastic physical attributes, great balance, great jumping reach, good flair, good determination. He's going to be a quality player for us out on that right wing. And if he can re- replicate even half of Robbie Sullivan's production for the side, he's going to be excellent. Next one, Rafa Sanchez. We picked up for £12.75 million. Pound. We also paid his release fee. First Spaniard that we've had at the club, an advanced forward. He's probably going to be a backup for George Sosa, at least early in his tenure. He was part of the under-21 side that most recently played for Spain at the under-21 championships. He had a pretty good tournament as well. That's actually how we found out about him. And we've been able to bring him in to be like a backup player. But really what I want is four high-quality strikers so that when we're making subs, when we're chasing games, when we're trying to find a winner, whatever else, we have quality in our depth and we can bring them in. Uh, Joe Ledge joined. He's a young English right back. He was part of the same reason that we picked up Matthew Downing and Aaron Langford and another guy who we'll get to in a moment, a young English talent that's been trained at clubs in the area. Only one and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He's going to be a backup for our starting right fullback, but no reason that we shouldn't have picked him up. Only on 10K a week. Scottish Youth International could very quickly become a Scottish Full International. Only 17 years of age, so plenty of room to, and time to develop, and he'll be an excellent depth player for us. Shreko Kupic is another one that I've tried to bring in before. We tried to pick him up initially from Dinamo Zagreb. He's a Croatian international, despite only being 19. He's got seven caps and one goal. Left-sided centre-back, which is one of those weird... That might be my kink. That might be my fetish, a left-sided centre-back. Played it 20 times last season for Watford before finishing the season back on loan at Dinamo Zagreb. We've picked him up for about $15 million, paid across a couple of different instalments. Excellent first touch, heading, marking tackling and technique passing will need a little bit of work but a left-sided center back there's not really anything more that you could ask for and the first croatian to join the side as well next one we have broken the bank 40 million pound our record transfer for ahmed kwakwa he's a 16 year old english central midfielder i randomly stumbled into him because he was i think 15 and playing for the english under 19 side and i thought who is this kid scouted him eventually approached Tottenham and said how much do you want what they wanted wasn't ridiculous I think they wanted about 60 million pound for him we've instead offered them back 10 million dollars up front 30 million dollars over the next three years to get him for 40 million a box-to-box midfielder he's likely going to start the majority of the games excellent acceleration and bravery tremendous work rate great passing great technique someone so young could definitely go on to be like the midfield core of the club for the next 10 seasons. So thrilled to be able to get him in, even though we have kind of smashed our transfer record. And then the other one that we've also paid 40 million for is Jeremy Berger, who we picked up from West Ham, relegated last season West Ham. We did try and go in for a couple of different players of theirs, but they don't need the money apparently because they were just asking for crazy amounts. They only picked him up from AS Monaco Reserves the season before, so they've made a tidy profit on the transaction. He's the first wonder kid that we've actually had in the series at any point, so thrilled to finally get one. Left wing back was a position that we struggled in last season, only 18, a French youth international. He's going to continue to get better, continue to get time. Only on 20K a week, we're still within that 20K limit that I've set for any of our players, that there are a couple of bonuses in his contract, but he's going to be fantastic for us as well. And then the last one we've brought in just on loan for six months is Sam Ellis, an English winger from Stoke. That is purely because of Juan Carlos Navarro's current work permit status. I'm hopeful that we will get a work permit for him relatively quickly the next time we apply but in the meantime we picked up sam ellis who's a three and a half star current ability right winger five star potential so that's the squad we've got 23 players in total uh including one carlos navarro who can't currently play there's a couple other players that are out uh, either coming back from injury or suspensions or playing against their parent club in this episode or whatever else But we do have tremendous depth. We've probably got the most depth that we've had at any particular point in the season. We've got the most potential of any point in the season. We've got quite a few players similar to Jeremy Berger. Well, let's just call him Berger because it's easier to say and I'll forget it in 10 minutes anyway. That if they kick on this season and start to make the most of their potential, they're actually going to become wonder kids themselves. 
using a good example here, George Sosa, when we picked him up, he was just a young striker. He's now in wonder kid status, having turned 18. We're going to continue to play him each week, and hopefully he can turn into like an elite-level striker. Tactically, we are back in our regular structure, our regular shape, our regular player roles. Still using that hashtag 442 shape. We are at a quality level where we don't have much red appearing on it, which at the start of last season, playing Premier League opposition, there was so much red all over this different thing because we just weren't at that level yet. Most players are comfortable in the roles that they're being asked to fulfill. Some will continue to grow and develop into their roles as the season wears on, but we're in a really good space. And our preseason has been pretty excellent as well. We had a preseason training camp in uh, New York, in North America, which all went pretty well. We've won the majority of our games. We did lose 2-1 to New York in our third preseason friendly of the season. Uh, New York Red Bulls, that is. We played New York City and smashed them. We played New York Cosmos and smashed them. We lost to Wolves and drew with West Ham in our last fixture, but we did rotate quite a bit. There were quite a few different players coming in and out of those teams to get them fitness, to get them ready for the season. And we start now with Stoke at home, televised fixture, get some extra cash for that. Let's magic of editing jump forward to that game now. All right, looking at the two lineups now, we're of course in our shape that we just went through. There's quite a few players that are out that we did kind of note earlier. So Akanovic is going to make his debut, as will Downing. Berger, Kupic, Langford, and Padanama are also making debuts for the club. It'll be O'Connell and Sosa up top. O'Connell is the captain this season. We'll start as that number 10 deep lying forward. Carter will play on the left wing because gresci has got a bit of a knock. And Colbass will anchor midfield. Graydon's back from his line at Luton Town, where he finished last season. He's happy again, which is great. We'll continue to try his development this season. And he's young, and he's English, and that's really what we need. They've got just two players, or three players, sorry. Four players, what am I talking about? Danny Loder on the left wing. Niambe, Dale Fry, who they picked up from Borough at some point, And Farinez in goal as the last remaining. Oh, and Palacios there as anchor in midfield. So they've got quite a few players, actually, that they're trying to continue get through the end of their careers, but all of them would be over 32 at least at this point. A whole bunch of different regens that are coming through as well. 4-2-3-1 shape. We should do well against it. And we're just going to assertively, first game of the season, at home. We're underdogs. That suits us down to the ground. Let's go out and cause an upset. And I'm also going to assertively tell the defence. I think there's a lot more to come from you. You completely believe you've got what it takes and they seem motivated, which is great. So season 14, well and truly underway. Hopefully we have a bit more improvement. We just stayed in the division by the skin of our teeth, three points separating us from relegation last season. If we can build on that and get into the top half this season, I will see it as being a tremendous success, given the amount of money that some of those other clubs and teams have. They've got a corner here, Palacios to take. Deep one across, Downing heads it away, but it comes to Marquis at the top of the box. It rattles around and Ikanovic eventually picks it up. Baumgartner now with the ball on the left wing. Loader. Who's a decent player, squared to Palacios again. He's got a man over in Niambe who does the overlap now, puts the cross in, hits the deck, back to Marquez, and he puts that one away. Ruben Marquez, his first goal of the season. It was a good finish, and to be fair, he had a man over that he could have laid it off to as well. So, sixth minute, we've conceded our first goal of the season, which isn't the greatest response. It's good side-to-side football from Stoke, to be fair. Niambe with the deep ball, and then Hulin does well to bring it down, and no one gets out to the ball quick enough, and Marquez just wraps his foot around that and curls it past the goalkeeper on the far side. It was a good strike. Take nothing away from that, but we need to be a bit better in our shape and formation. There's an immediate highlight from kickoff here. Joe Carter has the ball on the left wing. Are we going to try and peg him back immediately? Carter goes on a great run, squares it up for Downing, and he can only put the strike straight at Farron as in goal. Tries to cross again. He's going to get a third crack at it here. What can he do? One back stick towards Carter, and Carter's head up, plucked out of the air by Farron So at least we've had some sort of response. Highlight continues. It's a long ball over the top. Kupic wins the header, but gives it straight to Loder when he had a whole bunch of men around him. Baumgartner now on the wing. It's very similar to how their first goal set up. Palacios comes forward and drives from distance, and thankfully that one is well and truly over. So at least we had some sort of a response, but then they immediately had shots of their own. So we do need some sort of positive response here in the first half. Highlight here, Kanovic to take a deep free kick. Kupic at front post, and the ball comes back out, but Farinus does well to follow up the rebound and smother. All right, we've got a highlight here. I was about to use a shout, but we'll let Padanama take the goal kick. So, so can't bring it down. It comes to Hulin, the goal scorer. Back to Farinez. It's got a man out across. It should get cut out by Berger here. Played forward to O'Connell. Can't win the header. Carter just gives up on it after winning that. Michelle comes forward. Graydon thankfully tidies up the loose ball. 
Played forward to Downing. We've got three men forward if we can find the right pass here. Looks for Sosa in behind, who's going to get there first. And it's a good strike, and he's hit the post, and the AMBA scrambles away. So we have at least responded a little bit. Statistically, we're not doing horribly. Match rating, we're not doing horribly. But I'm going to demand more, even though we're only 20 minutes in, just to try and settle some of these people that are showing themselves as anxious or nervous. And a couple of players responded positively, but not the two that I was going after. They've got a highlight here. Palacios to take a deep free kick, and he finds Marquez for his second goal of the season. It looks like just a pretty simple near post run. We'll see if it was a header or not. The frustrating part is that I just used a shout, and then they immediately get a highlight. Just poor marking, and it's a good ball in and a decent header to get it down and on target. But just like that, we are 2-0 down inside the first half of Season 14. So we're going to switch to Cautious, see if that gives us any change in the last 15 minutes before we get through to half time. Here we go. Highlight with us. It's Berger from the throw-in. Throws it neck height at O'Connell, who does as best as he can. Akanovic will tidy up the scramble at the top of the box. He bursts forward and strikes from distance, but it never really looked like it was troubling the goal. At least it's some sort of response. All right, so at halftime, we're 2-0 down. We have come back into it a little bit statistically, at least. 13 shots, 8 on target, 53% possession. They've had 11, 6, and 47%. But in reality, the disappointment is that we're two goals down. And two simple goals that both kind of started from set-piece situations where we just didn't reset quick enough. I'm going to leave some cautious, but I'm going to aggressively say I expect to see a much better showing from you in the second half. And then it's kind of rare for me to do this, but I'm going to make two subs. Uh, Akanovic had actually picked up a bit of a knock. So we'll bring on Norwegian Youth International, Jorn Kollenberg. And we'll switch Kolbass to be the box-to-box -box in that situation. And then George Sosa's really struggled, so I'm going to bring on Rafa Sanchez for his debut as well. There's two more, Graydon and Langford, that have also struggled a little bit, but given how early we are in the season, I'm not going to panic too much. I'm just going to hold on to that last sub until there's probably about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes to go, and we'll see how we get on from there. But there's opportunities here for some of the people that haven't started in this game. If they perform well, they can definitely go after starting berths. It's a good ball across to Sanchez immediately. A uh, good combination there on the right hand, left-hand side sorry, between Carter and Berger. And the cross just too high. Highlight here, Farinez takes a one forward. Carter's right there, but Michelle does well to keep it down and play it forward. Palacios at the base midfield to Hulan at the 10. Out right, right to Neambi. It's a deep ball across towards Loder. And the shot was thankfully blocked out for a corner. This is where their setup came for the first goal, so we have to be alert. Graydon flicks it away. Only as far as Gardner at the top of the box. Out wide to Loder again. Crossfield switch. They love a crossfield switch, though. They're kind of dragging us very wide. And thankfully, we do okay and get the one out for a throw. Highlight here. Throwing starts with Niambi. Downing does well with a good tackle. Emile Smith throws playing for Stoke and still going. And thankfully, Baumgartner, who cuts inside, puts the shot over the top from 18 yards. Just a bit slow out to the ball. And while we're still having more of it statistically, we're not seeing a tremendous amount in terms of highlights, which is frustrating. So we're going to use Old Faithful, our Get Creative Shout. Yang Colbass has picked up an injury, which is just disgusting. All right, so it's going to be a debut for Ahmed Kwakwa. He's a little bit injured at the moment. He's carrying a knock, but he's only a day or two out. So hopefully he doesn't add to that injury any further. But 16 years old, 40 million pound man, probably the future of our midfield. Let's see how he can do on debut. And given that we're 2-0 down with 30 minutes remaining, we don't have a tremendous amount to lose. So we might as well switch to our attacking mentality. Be a little bit more direct in our play and see if that can fashion us some chances. Well, I've used that get creative shout. Most players have responded as inspired. There's a couple of anxious people out there. We're still having more shots and more possession, but we just aren't seeing it in terms of highlights or key highlights for the game. So we probably aren't creating the most clear-cut chances. Around the grounds, Liverpool are getting belted 4-0 opening day of the season against Arsenal. Everton are also doing quite well, winning 3-0 in their match. Highlight here, it starts from a set piece again. Marquez looking for a hat trick and he's found it, but I think that one's going to get ruled out due to obstruction. Loader, it's going to... I oh, forgot about VAR, but thankfully that one's been ruled out, so we don't go 3-0 down. Nearly 10 minutes to go, so we're going to use our demand more shout, try and get a bit more focus out of everybody. It would just be great to pull something back, and no one's responded positively. In fact, our two midfielders, subs, have now felt pressured. But it's not going well opening day of the year. 
All right, four minutes to be added on. We've got a highlight here. Patton Armour with a long ball forward. Baumgartner sends Loder into the corner. We need to shut him down. It's a good tackle there from... And Downing now recovers. We have got men bursting forward. He finds Sanchez now. Two men backs post. One of them's Carter. He gets the strike away, but it's a fantastic save from Farinez. who's had a good game. He's dealt with pretty much everything we put at him. He's got a 7-2 match rating for a keeper, which is basically a 10. Corner now, but we're pretty much at the end of extra time. Carter's going to take. And Kohlenberg. Oh, no, it goes to Carter. Is it going to stand? Okay, so we have pulled one back. We've at least had some sort of positive response, but I really thought that highlight was just going to be the referee blowing for the full-time whistle. So at least that will help our goal difference. Carter gets it on his not-favoured right foot. Kohlenberg was in the area, but I think he just left it, and the keeper missed the ball entirely. Here we go. Immediate highlight. Is there any late drama that's going to be added on here, or is it just the referee calling time? And he does. He calls time. So a 2-1 defeat opening day of the season. Not the greatest performance that we've ever had. 19 shots, 12 on target, 50% of the ball. They had 17, 8, and 50%. But most importantly, they scored two goals to our one. Maybe that's something that I have to do midweek is just review our current instructions for set pieces and stuff so that we rotate a little bit quicker once we give the ball away. I'm going to assertively say I'm not happy with the performance out there. Stoke, no offence to Stoke or any fans that might be listening, they're a side that we should be competing with. At, they're at a similar level trying to get into that top 10, so we really need to be beating sides in and around that level. So despite that defeat, it does see us into 14th spot. So we didn't have the worst opening day of most of those teams. Hashtag United edge out in tight contest, so at least the description's a little bit kinder to us. Marquez with his two goals and an 8.8 .8 match rating got player of the match. Quite a few debuts for the club itself. Uh, Kupic, Kanovic, Sanchez, Patanama, Berger, Langford, Kwakwa, and Downing. And a couple there also making their first league or senior football appearances as well. I'm going to do this press conference, but magic of editing, we're going to jump ahead to the game against Southampton now. Uh, just like that, we're a few days ahead. They're playing a flat 4-4-2. Ryan Sessegnon and Kepa Arizabalaga are their two mainstays that are actual players. Everybody else is pretty much just a regen. Uh, this guy here, Bacon, in midfield is one of the England central midfielders. And Henricus Leder up top is a phenomenal player. I'm pretty sure there was like a £150 million build from Manchester United rejected for him. During the most recent transfer window, and Jesus Christ, have a look at these physical attributes. Lots of 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s. Only balance is 15. And like I would look at balance at 15 being like a good trait, and it's his weakest physical attribute. So yeah, keep an eye on the 22-year-old Belgian because he looks quality. Uh, we're making a couple of changes. Sanchez is going to come in up top for Sosa, who I thought struggled in the last game. Kollenberg comes in for Colbass, who picked up that knock. And Greshi will start now that he's fit. I brought on Ellis for his debut on the right-hand side of midfield. Downing actually didn't play that badly and made the team of the week. Um, I just think Ellis is a bit more suited to the actual role that we're asking him to do on that right-hand side. So we might change that. We'll give Downing another opportunity if things don't go well. And given that we're away from home, given that it's early in the season, given that I think we play six games in the opening two weeks... No, apologies. Five games in the opening two weeks... I just want to try and rotate a little bit. So we're going to switch to our cautious mentality as well. Hopefully that reduction in intensity will help a couple of the players get through the game. But I'm also conscious that I think we play Tottenham in three days and Tottenham are a very, very good team, the reigning champions. So if we can get a bit settled in our cautious mentality, we'll be doing all right to carry it on and into that game. All right, away we go. I'd love to pick up our first points of the season in this episode. So much of season 13, well, I think we only filmed three episodes actually in season 13, but so much of it was us losing games. Uh, if we could actually try and get some points in an episode for you guys to see, like that would be a phenomenal, phenomenal response. So nothing to speak of so far in this one after 30 minutes. No highlights for either side. We've used our demand sh more shout after 30 minutes just to try and give everyone some focus to get through to half time. But they've had, they've had not a lot other than statistical shots. We haven't had much in terms of anything. So if we get through to half time at the current rate, we might be doing okay. First highlight, Samuel to take a free kick right from the edge of the area and Patton Armour does well and Ikanovic hooks it away. So first real shot in anger, first highlight that we've seen so far for the game. And it took till the 40th minute to get there. Just like that, we get to halftime. They've had 12 shots, 5 on target, and 54% of the ball. We've had 6, 2, and 46, but that's kind of the way that we're set up in our cautious mentality. So I'm not panicking too much about it. 
Just the one highlight to speak of was the free kick that they had on the edge of the area. So let's just calmly tell everyone I'm pleased with how things are going, keep it up, and try and boost morale a little bit that way. Still a lot of yellow early in the season. We want to try and get them up to green as quickly as we can. They all seem pretty positive. So we're going to give it 15 minutes, and then we will jump forward. Not jump forward. We'll give it 15 minutes, and then we'll have a look at form, fitness, all that sort of stuff, and make some subs. All right, highlight here. It's a ball forward. We're in a 2v2 situation, and Levin's peeled off the outside. He cuts it back well for later, who we did speak about in the build-up, and thankfully... His head eclipses the base of the post, and Pat Nama does well to recover. Okay, we're getting towards the hour mark, so we're going to make two subs. Sam Ellis will come off. We'll bring on Downing, who played well in the first game on the right wing. And then a reverse of the first fixture, we're going to take off Rafa Sanchez as the advance forward and bring on George Sosa and see if we can get some sort of response. Again, we haven't been doing too badly, but we haven't had like a shot in anger of our own. So I'm going to leave us on that cautious mentality, and hopefully as they continue to push and look for a winner here in the second half, we will get something on the counter. That's the idea anyway. We'll see if it plays out. An hour gone, so we're going to use Old Faithful, our Get Creative shout. See if anybody responds positively. Pretty much everyone's inspired by that, which is great because they've had some poor shouts from their sideline and most of their team looks disinterested. Right, they've got a highlight here. It's a deep ball across towards 11. We've managed to scramble it away later with the strike from an angle and thankfully he's ruled out at offside. It's 15 minutes remaining, so I think we might also look to make a quick sub. Our two central midfielders are both on yellow cards, but what I'm thinking we might do is take off Gresci. It's his first performance of the season, and he hasn't been that great, and Joe Carter can hopefully try and give us a bit of run in that wide midfield spot. All right, so putting my faith in Kolenberg and Ikanovic to not get themselves sent off, and hopefully Joe Carter can kind of respond a little bit and give us a bit of a spark off the bench to create an opportunity here. Pat Nama, our goalkeeper, tellingly, is our highest average rated player, sorry, our highest rated player in this match with a 7.1 rating. Humphreys, their left back, and Bacon, the England international in midfield, is doing well, but neither of their strikers have played fantastically, so we might be doing an okay job closing them down or limiting them to strikes from distance, which is probably where their 17 shots have come from. First highlight, Akanovic to take a deep free kick, and it was just wide of the near post. We are also into the last 10 minutes, so I'm going to use our demand more shout. And hopefully that just focuses everyone up for the last 10 minutes and we can kind of hang on a little bit here. Okay, they've immediately got a highlight, De Bruyne to take. And he's scored Edwin De Bruyne, it's not Kevin. It's so frustrating when you use a shout and then immediately they get a highlight when you've been doing so incredibly well. It's a good free kick, maybe Pat Nama could have gotten across to it a bit better. Uh, it's got good curl on it and Pat Nama can only push it back into the own net. So we've gone a goal down. And 10 minutes remaining, we need to try and get something, so we might as well move to our attacking mentality and see if we can try and find an equaliser. To, in truth, I'd just like a highlight. We haven't had one for the entire game. Oh, we did have that free kick that went side netting, but in reality, we haven't really tested them whole much. All right, three minutes to be added on. We're two minutes through it, but we do have a highlight here. Berger squares it up now to Kolenberg. Do we have any late drama to add on here? We did score very late in the first fixture. Can we follow it up in the second? O'Connor with the ball now. Back to Akanovic. Keeping possession well. Carter now. Gives it straight back to De Bruyne. They've got a long ball forward to Leder, who we spoke about in the build-up to the game. Good reverse pass towards Levin. Everyone runs away from the ball. And he looks to square it up. Falls to De Bruyne again. Sessegnon back post on his own. And they've caught us on the counter-attack to make it 2-0. His first goal of the season. And Edwin De Bruyne has got a goal and an assist. See, like we had two guys that were closer to the ball than Levin. And he ran past them both to get to it. And De Bruyne just had to pick out a simple pass, the back stick, and it's a good finish from Sassignon. But very frustrating. Maybe we haven't recruited as well as I thought. Maybe we're in for another season of struggle. And we'll just be looking to keep ourselves in the division for another year. We're through the three minutes of additional time. The referee calls full time. So not great. Still no points this season. Two frustrating defeats against sides that really aren't going to do that much in the division in Stoke and Southampton. 20 shots, 9 on target, 52% possession for them. 8, 2, and 48 for us. We will get better. Our team will gel more. We've got a few players that are still coming back, but we are a little bit behind the eight ball in that the transfer window is already, already shut. And I'm just going to assertively say I'm not happy with your performance out there. A 2 0 defeat, even away from home, even against a pretty strong. So there's some certain strong individuals in that Southampton team. It's still quite frustrating. So even with that defeat, we do sit in 17th spot. We are glued to that position, apparently. It's where we finished last year. It's pretty much where we're going to sit around at the moment. Southampton, Easter victory. Edwin Bruin, 
goal and assist gets him the man of the match award. Post-match press conference, I'm going to send devs to it. I've been sending him to a lot of post-match press conferences lately because I've just done so many of them. All right, let's have a look at our future schedule and what we might actually come back for. A couple of tasty looking fixtures around December. Do I want to jump forward that far though? Now let's come back at the start of November and do the game away to Arsenal uh, and the game at home to Chelsea, mainly because I don't think we actually had episodes against them last season and because they're kind of London derbies a little bit, both based around London, we're based around London as well. I don't think we have any formal rivalries or dynamic rivalries that have developed. Nah, nothing's come through in terms of derbies or rivalries or anything like that. But that does seem like a, still a decent leap forward. We'll be around the 10th game of the, se of the league season by the time we get to that particular match. And fingers crossed, things have turned around a little bit and we've picked up some points. We do, in that time, play Swansea, who nearly got relegated last season. Brentford, who've come up from the lower division. Bournemouth, who've come up from the lower division as well. So hopefully there are some games there where we can pick up some points and do relatively well. As always, those guys, more than anything, I just appreciate you watching and following the series along. You can chuck a like on this video if you are enjoying it so far. If you want to try and help lift me a little bit so that we can bounce back from two defeats to start the season. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on future videos as they continue to drop. Or if you want to be kept up to date on all my different engagements with the community. All the hype as we continue to build towards the release of FM20 on November 19th. You can follow in the mixer underscore FM on Twitter. But as always, I've been Sean. This has been In The Mixer. And don't you ever forget... The hashtag it.